I will never forget the day I officially started Red Tape Translation. It was actually one of the scariest, but also one of the most rewarding days of my life. So I just showed up. I got up at four o'clock in the morning and I took the train to the foreigner's office, the immigration office. Back then in Berlin, it was called the Ausländerbehörde. And as usual, that early in the morning, there was a very long line of people shivering and squirming. And so I walked to the front of the line and then I turned around and I took a deep breath and I said, does anyone need any help in English? And of course, 10 hands shot in the air all at once. And that's when I got to know some of my future clients. When the security guard opened the door, there was this enormous stampede to get in. It was like, kind of like Black Friday. But then everyone dissipated and went in different directions. They knew exactly where they were going. And those who had no idea where to go, they got left behind. And many of them had to wait the better part of a day to be seen. Lesson one, know exactly where you need to go. The building is huge and it is not easy to find out where you're supposed to be. So if you're going it alone, you should arrive early and allow extra time to find the right waiting room. And don't be late because even if you're a little bit late, it could be that your waiting number has already shown up on the board and been taken down again. Non-attendance at a foreigner's office can create a whole bunch of problems. And this is why red tape interpreters know this building like the back of our hand. I'm never gonna forget that caseworker. After she'd seen me for about the third or fourth time that day, she took me aside and she said, what are you doing? Uh, I had the impression I was gonna get in trouble. And then these words just tumbled out. I'm trying to start a business and I'm helping people for free today so that I can figure out how it all works. And her whole attitude shifted and then she actually told me exactly what I needed to do. And she said, actually, it would be great if you stay because I've got a client sitting at my desk. She's got no idea what I'm saying. So could you come with me, please? Lesson two. Be honest. Many people are terrified of German caseworkers, but they're just people. They're doing their job and it's a demanding job. They do appreciate applicants who are genuinely trying to do their best and trying to make the caseworker's job as easy as possible. For example, by bringing a translator or having their application prepared properly and thoroughly. Lesson three, it feels good to give help and it feels good to get help. It was such a thrill to know that my contribution had made such a positive difference. And dare I say, we even had a little bit of fun in the waiting room. Over the years, I've added some handy tricks to my arsenal for smoothing things over with German bureaucrats. There is often a firm barrier at the beginning of the conversation, but it is possible to lift it. And it is such a joy when it actually works. It is possible to leave that place with a smile on your face. Lesson four, there's always a cat calendar. Okay. There's not always a cat calendar, but the cat calendar is symbolic. It might be a travel destination calendar, a drawing done by a four-year-old. There is always something. And if you comment on it in a positive way, this is a great way to build rapport. For example, I noticed a Lego collection on a caseworker's desk, and I said that I'd recently met an authorized Lego artist at a party I'd been to recently. And this man was one of 12 people in the world that can actually do this job. And he was pretty impressed. Lesson five is that no doesn't always mean no. I'm not talking about consent or relationships here. I'm talking about your dealings with German bureaucracy. My experience is that if someone in a public office is asked to do something and they don't particularly wanna do it, they'll just say no. They might also say, Ungern, which is one of my least favorite German words. But if you push gently, the no can often be turned into a yes. Which brings me to my last lesson. Ausnahmsweise is my very favorite German word ever. Ausnahmsweise means as an exception to the rule. And you're saying, please. And maybe it's because it's such a nice word. Maybe because it reminds the caseworker of their power to make or break your day. If I end the request with the German word Ausnahmsweise, quite often I get a yes. Do you need a hint? Visit redtapetranslation.com and choose a service that's right for you.